Hello, welcome to module 2 and the first part week 1 of modeling and analytics for supply chain management. Now, in module 1 you have been given a brief overview of what a supply chain is and then a broad overview or a broad understanding of how each and every element in the supply chain functions and there you also learned what is the role of analytics at each and every node and how analytics can help in building up a sustainable and a competitive supply chain. In module 1 you also learned that supply chain is basically the enabler to competitive advantage because products and processes have become so much generic today that the only way by which you can increase your sales of your organization is by reaching the consumer at the shortest possible time and with the lowest possible market price that is with the lowest possible cost. How to do that? You cannot reduce your employee cost, you cannot reduce your manufacturing cost. The only way is to reduce your distribution cost. That is why lot of focus today is on supply chain and that is why analysts are looking at all the ways by which you can reduce cost and therefore, the role of modeling has come in because it is only through mathematical modeling and optimization techniques that you can reduce cost and yet balance all the activities that you think are important for your organizational functioning. That is why there is a renewed focus and that is why the subject for supply chain modeling and analytics. So, in module 1 you have learned the basics and the advanced reasons why you need supply chain modeling and then we started off with what a supply chain is all about and we said that your supply chain will start from the demand forecasting. Okay? Your supply chain will start from demand forecasting. Once you have forecasted demand then you know how much raw material you need to buy from your suppliers. Okay? So, next is your supplier selection because when you go to a supplier the supplier will ask you the first thing the supplier will ask is how much quantity do you need. So, unless you have a proper demand forecasting you cannot tell that quantity to the supplier. Okay? So, first is demand forecasting then is supplier selection and once you have selected the supplier now the products have to be transported. Now, the products have to be transported to the factory. In the factory, in the factory there the product is produced and then in the factory the product is produced okay? and then again the products have to be taken to a warehouse for storing. Okay? So, warehouse for raw material storage, warehouse for finished product storage. So, this and then the product goes to the market, then the product goes to the market. Okay? So, this is a broad diagram of supply chain. right? and this is what you have learnt in module 1. And then we say that though supply chain starts with demand forecasting, though supply chain starts with demand forecasting, we are not looking at demand forecasting because demand forecasting is a subject or is a topic that is very very extensively dealt with in operations research. We straight away started with supplier selection and in module 2 you have learned all the modeling techniques for supplier selection. Right? Now, once you have selected the suppliers, these raw materials have to reach your factory or the warehouse which will store the raw materials for the time being. Okay? Now, the same thing applies to once the materials are 
produced from the factory and they go to the finished goods warehouse. Right? So, there will be now issues by which and the questions by which the questions that will be asked to you from the top management is how will I reduce my transportation cost? How should I reduce? How should I model my transportation network so that my transportation cost is lowest or reduced to the minimum possible? Okay. So, what is it? Supply chain first starts with demand forecasting. Then once we have forecasted the demand, we need to select the suppliers who will supply me the raw materials and then I need to do transportation modeling because my objective is to reach the raw materials to the factory as well as the finished products to the warehouse in the lowest possible cost. Okay? So, because my company will ask me or rather the analyst should ask himself or herself what is the lowest possible cost by which I can reach the raw materials to the factory and reach the finished products to the finished goods warehouse. So, transportation modeling becomes an integral part of supply chain management and supply chain modeling and analytics. Okay? So, today we will deal with this transportation modeling part of it. Right? Now, So, in this module, we will take care of total cost model, max min and min max models, maximum flow model, shortest path model and minimum spanning tree model. Okay. What this is all about? Let us see. See, uh, our first objective is to move the products from destination x to destination y, destination x to destination y in the shortest possible time and this with the lowest possible cost. This is our first objective. Okay? So, this is my total cost model. Right? The, the products has to reach you in the shortest possible time and the lowest possible cost. Now, however, in this process what happens is like say if, if you are starting point is A. If your starting point is A and you will have to go to C, right? your starting point is A and you will have to go to C. Right? Your starting point is A and you will have to go to C. Now, what you can do is you can take this road, then come here and then go. Right? Okay? Alternatively, you can take this route, move up to here and then go. Alternatively, you can move up to this route and then go. So, what we want to say is there are multiple possible points available to move from A to C, to move from A to C. Now, if you just look at this diagram, the lowest possible route is this one. Right? So, if I always move my products to this route, what is happening? I am basically closing off, I am basically closing off this route. Right? I am not using this route. So, I am not taking any local transporter who is ready to do business in this route, who is ready to do business in this route. I am ignoring these transporters. Now, tomorrow if there is some problem with these with this shortest route, then what will happen? Then I cannot get hold of any transporter who is operating in these routes, they will not give me business. Why? Because they are already engaged with other companies who for whom they are doing business, they do not have any extra vehicles. So, basically if I take only one route which my mathematical model tells me to take, in reality sometimes it might create some problems for us. We will have to keep the option of 2, 3 routes, 2 to 3 routes open for moving from A to C. This is business prudence. Okay? Right? Two, three, two, like say for example, you are getting out of your house and what is the easiest way to come out of your house and reach your college or institute? 
the, the easiest way, I am not telling shortest, the easiest way is to take a taxi or take your own vehicle and go, right. But if you are every day taking a taxi or taking your own vehicle, what is happening? You are becoming very, very comfort, you are, you are, you are staying in a very comfort zone. Tomorrow by chance, if the car is not working or if the taxi is not available, then you will have to take the difficult route that is board a bus, get down at some point, again board another bus, get down at some point and then board the third bus and reach your destination point. But since you are, you are not acquainted with this new bus multiple boarding points, bus multiple boarding zones, you will not be comfortable and maybe you will not be able to travel by bus. So, what we are trying to say is, if you use only one mode of transport from your house to your workplace, what are you doing? You are shutting off the other routes. So, then when time is, uh, when it is required, then you will not be able to work on those other routes. You will not be able to board the bus. It will be difficult for you. So, this max min and min max model takes care of this problem. Then is the maximum flow model. What is the maximum flow model? Maximum flow model is, for example, my, I, I am working in a JIT system, just in time system. Means whatever I need as raw material, if I need them at 8 am in the morning in my factory work schedule, the material will be available at 7.50 or 7.55 am and in American and Japanese systems, the material will be available at 7.59 am. So, just in time. Now, suppose my just in time requirement is 160 metric ton of raw material. The carrying capacity of a truck is assume 10 metric ton. So, how many trucks do you need? 16. 16 trucks you need. Now, also assume that in one hour, 160 metric ton of raw material is used up in my factory. So, in so logically, in one hour, 16 trucks should be able to reach my factory, right? Because in one hour, I need 160 metric tons, 8 to 9 am, 9 to 10 am, 10 to 11, 11 to 12, okay? So, in one hour, 160 metric ton of load should reach my factory. That means, 16 trucks should be able to reach my factory in one hour. Now, what is the raw material source? If from the raw material source till my factory, it takes more than one hour for the 16 trucks to reach, then I cannot depend solely on road transport. If in one hour, 16 trucks cannot reach, rather in the other way, if it takes 16 trucks to take, if it takes 16 trucks more than one hour to reach by road, then I cannot depend only on road. Some portion I will have to bring by rail, some portion I will have to bring by other modes of transport. So, that is how to determine how many vehicles can travel in one hour, that is the maximum flow model. The opposite is the shortest path model. How do I reach my factory within the shortest possible time as a supplier? Okay? And the last one is the minimal spanning tree model. This model tells that if I have multiple warehouses, what is the minimum distance that I will it, it will take me to cover all the warehouses. So, the spanning, it, I span all the warehouses and what is the minimal spanning tree. So, these are the models that we will take care of in this transportation cost decision making. Now, having said that, there is one more model that we will not discuss here, that is the transshipment model. Okay. We will pick that up in a later stage when we design the entire supply chain, when we model the entire supply chain. There we will require this and we will pick up this model then. Okay. Now, let us go to the first model, that is the total cost model. Okay. Now, this is the, this is a snapshot 
of the transportation total cost modeler. Okay. What it says is assume that I have I have a some uh, raw material warehouses or finished product warehouses. Let us take the end product supply chain. I have a finished product warehouse or some supplier warehouse in Madhya Pradesh. Sorry, in Madhya Pradesh, I have some finished product warehouse or supplier warehouse in Madhya Pradesh, Himachal Pradesh, and Uttar Pradesh. I have them already. Okay. In the next module, in warehousing decision modules, you will learn how to locate these warehouses. What are the methodologies by which I can locate these warehouses? Okay. So, there should be a mathematical tool or technique by which I should decide on the location of the warehouses. It should not be arbitrary. right? So, but for here, we assume that we already have these warehouses right from the beginning, maybe 100 year old. We are running these supply sources or warehouses and these are my markets, Delhi, Mumbai, Kolkata, Madras. Instead of markets, these can also be taken as production centers. These are my supply zones, my suppliers stay here, Madhya Pradesh, Himachal and UP and these are the factory zones and the factories are near to the market, that also you can take. Okay. So, basically it has an origin destination. Okay. Origin is here and destination is here. Right? This is this origin may be supplier base, destination is factory, origin may be finished product warehouse, destination is market, but essentially it is an origin, these are the markets. Okay. Now, what is this 8100, 1700, 12? Now, 8100, 1700, basically are the cost of moving one unit of the product from this place to this place. That is the cost of moving one unit of a product from Madhya Pradesh to Delhi is 81 rupees cost of moving one unit of the product, one unit, okay, one unit, cost of moving one unit of the product from Madhya Pradesh to Mumbai is 92 rupees, cost of moving one unit of product from Madhya Pradesh to Kolkata is 101 rupees, cost of moving from 130 rupees to Madras. Okay. Similarly, 117, 77, 108, 98 and up to this cost of moving one unit from Uttar Pradesh to Madras is 119 rupees. What is the capacity of this Madhya Pradesh warehouse? Capacity of the Madhya Pradesh warehouse is 20. What is 20? This 20 can be metric ton, this 20 can be quintals, whatever. Okay? This is units. Capacity of Himachal Pradesh is 16 units. Capacity, the warehouse capacity, warehouse stock holding capacity or if you can take it as a supplier, it is the supplier's supplying capacity. Okay. It is the supplier's supplying capacity. Okay. So, this is 11. So, what is the total supply possible? 47 units. What is the demand at Delhi? Demand means end market demand or if you are taking the inbound logistics, this is the demand from the factory at Delhi, from the factory at Delhi. Okay. So, demand at Delhi is 12 units, demand from the factory at Mumbai or from the Mumbai market is 8, 9 and 16. So, total demand is 45 units. Now, normally if you have done OR operations research problems earlier, you will see that this, this thing, this thing is more or less equal for most of the problems. That is demand and supply is equal. right? This is done to make life simple, but in reality life is not simple. Okay. So, we will not make it simple also for you. We will not make it simple. We will learn it the way it will happen in the industry. So, here my demand is 45, my supply is 47. Right? Okay. Now, you will say, but then demand may be more also than supply. Right. For example, when a new movie is released, demand for movie tickets is much more if it is a hit movie and so the movie theatres go house full. So, demand is more than the supply of seats. 
that can also happen yes that can also happen we will learn that also okay so what i'm trying to say is demand will not always equal to supply and that is what is actually will happen in reality so this is my cost structure okay these are my demands and these are my supplies right okay so what will happen rather what should i do here if you see how should i model it now what is my so, so let us first ask this question what is my objective okay what is my objective as a supply chain planner or as a supply chain designer my objective is to minimize cost right agreed so how much products i should transport from madhya pradesh to delhi how much products i should transport from madhya pradesh to mumbai etc how much products i should transport from himachal pradesh to delhi how much i should transport from himachal to mumbai etc how much i should transport from up to delhi up to mumbai etc the total cost required for this has to be minimized so how much i should transport we don't know that the mathematical model will tell me right how much i should transport let x1 be the quantity that i should transport from madhya pradesh to delhi what is the cost 81 rupees per unit so what is the total cost of transporting from madhya pradesh to delhi 81 x1 madhya pradesh to mumbai how much quantity will you transport x2 we don't know that will come out right that will come out so madhya pradesh to delhi sorry madhya pradesh to mumbai what is the total cost possible cost of one unit is 92 rupees x2 quantity is transported so madhya pradesh to mumbai is 92 x2 in this way 101 x3 130 x4 dot 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 up to 119 x12 this is your total cost that is possible and this cost has to be minimized right okay this cost has to be minimized right now that is basically what we have shown you in this problem that is basically what we have shown you here this is your total cost that is possible see last one was 119 x12 if you remember from the earlier matrix and the first one was 81 x1 and this entire thing has to be minimized okay what are the constraints let us go back so is this clear let us go back and see what are the what are my constraints my constraints are what is the demand of so my constraints are let us see this was x1 this was x2 this was x3 right my constraint was my constraint was that delhi demand demand from the delhi city or the delhi factory has to be fully met so my constraint is x1 is the quantity to be moved from mp to delhi x2 is himachal to delhi and x3 is up to delhi so x1 plus x2 plus x3 x1 x2 x3 should equal to 12 that is only when my demand will be met right for delhi equal to right clear or uh, no we started with x1 x2 x3 x4 so let us make it okay we moved this way x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 x6 x7 x8 x9 x10 x11 x12 Okay, so x1 plus x5 plus x9, x1 plus x5 plus x9 
is equal to 12 right x 2 plus x 7 plus x 10 is equal to 8 ok x 3 plus x 8 plus x 11 is equal to 9 x 4 plus x 8 plus x 12 is equal to 16 these are my first set of constraints ok what are the next set of constraints this is what constraint that we have done demand ok what is the next set of constraints Madhya Pradesh supply can be maximum 20 units why are we saying not equal to 20 because not equal to 20 we are saying because a factory cannot guarantee its maximum output every time there will be machine breakdowns there will be workers who may be absent ok some machines under regular maintenance so maximum capacity a factory may not always attain same applies to warehouses so your supply will always be less than equal to your maximum capacity. So, what are your supply constraints x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3 plus x 4 less than equal to 20 x 5 plus x 7 plus x 8 sorry x 5 this is x 6 sorry x 6 x 7 ok yeah this is x 5 x plus x 6 plus x 7 plus x 8 less than equal to 16 x 9 plus x 10 plus x 11 plus x 12 is less than equal to 11. We are not taking cost this is only the quantity that we can supply. So, 81 will not be taken it is only the quantities x 1 because warehouse deals with quantity. So, it is only x 1 x 2 x 3 x 4 do not say 81 x 1 plus 92 x 2 that is cost x 1 x 2 x 3 x 4 this is quantity ok. So, these are my two sets of these are my two sets of constraints right. So, this is what we have just now got just now found out from there x 1 x 2 x 3 x 4 less than equal to 15 huh? ok and these were my demands ok these were my demands. Sorry. there is a slight 20 16 and ok. So, these were my supply constraints less than equal to and these were my demand constraints equal to and definitely x value should be greater than equal to 0 because quantity transported cannot be negative. So, x i will be greater than equal to 0. So, this is the optimization model that you need to solve ok Re right remember in supply selection we have started off with how to solve or how to model the linear programming problems ok. Now, what we have done here is we have given you the same model we have used a software called the same model we have used a software called LIPS 1.11.1 this is available in the net you can easily download and work on it. It is the same the beauty of this is this we can use the way we write it in our exercise books we can use the same manner to model this ok. So, uh, to write this model actually the same manner we can write this model. So, this is the screenshot of just the writing of the same thing in a model format and in case you are using excel this is the excel based model for this software you can just write the numbers and what you will get is you will get something like this what it says is your minimum is 4131 that is your total cost which our objective was to minimize that is rupees 4131 ok and what it says is x 1 is 12 x 2 8 that means, if you see we had Madhya Pradesh and this side we had Delhi, Mumbai, Kolkata and Madras right and we had x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4 remember x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4 right. So, what we are saying is x 1 is 12, x 2 is 8, x 3 0, x 4 0. So, here 0 0 right. 
That means that 12 units should be moved from Madhya Pradesh to Delhi, 8 units should be moved from Madhya Pradesh to Mumbai. What was my capacity of Madhya Pradesh? If you remember, it was 20. So, this is also satisfied. So, this solution or this, this type of a programming gives us the quantities how much should be sent from where. Okay. So, 12, 8, 16, 9. Okay. 12, 8, 16, 9. Remember, remember these quantities 12, 8, 16, 9 because we will again come back with a situation which is in the next part. What we want to say is see x 3, x 4, x 5, x 6, x 7, x 9, x 10, x 12 all are zeros. That means, no quantity should move from these locations, no quantity should move from these locations. That means, from this warehouse to this market, no quantity should be sent. If you send, my cost will be higher. Okay. Clear? So, this is basically this is basic. So, this is what your solution is okay? 12, 8, 9 and 16. So, x 3 if you see x, x 3 is 0, x 4 is also 0 and these are all zeros. So, nothing should be sent sorry this is 16, nothing should be sent here right, nothing should be sent here. So, this is basically my transportation cost model. It tells us how much we should send, right? Clear? Done. So, this gives us the minimum cost that is incurred by the supply chain network for transportation purpose. Okay? Now, in next week, we will come up with a situation. In the next week, we will come up with a situation that is a bit modification to this model and this, that is one which you will actually face in the day to day supply chain modeling planning and design okay yeah thank you